Let's get started in building payment links and buttons. If you need to create shopping cart add to cart and view cart buttons or configure the button settings, please view our other videos to guide you on doing that. There are a few different ways to get to the payment links page. Log into your PayPal account and towards the top of the left menu, we can click on create and see the payment link or button option. Or in the same menu, if you click open the pay and get paid section, you will find both the create payment links and buttons option as well as the create shopping cart buttons option. In your main dashboard area in the quick access section, you can also click on payment links and buttons. And lastly, if we scroll down to quick actions, you can create a simple payment link or also click on customize to be taken to the payment links and buttons page. So let's navigate there now with any of these options mentioned. Here we are on the payment links page and you will notice that we can go straight to the preview on the right side and you can see this settings link here. Or if you scroll down, you will see the payment methods settings link here as well. Lastly, if you scroll up and click on more actions, you will have the settings option. You can view our other video that goes over all of the settings page options. And if you ever need to get to your current existing links and buttons, you can click on this same menu, the saved links and buttons option. Or alternatively, you can click on the link up here that says back to saved links and buttons. And that will take you to the list of previously created links and buttons. But for now, let's get started on this page. There are a few things you'll need to pay attention to on this page. There are three tabs here, product, checkout, and confirmation. The product tab is meant for you to provide the information of what you are selling or getting paid for. The checkout tab includes options which affect your overall order total. And the confirmation tab displays options of what you can set up after your customer has successfully completed the transaction. The preview on the right is fully interactable and updates in real time as you enter the information. The preview shows only the mobile view, but your customers can pay wherever you paste the link or button. Starting on this product tab, we are asked if we want to create a payment link and QR code or instead a payment button. A payment link and QR code is useful if you want to get paid by sending a link to someone and don't have a website. This feature will take customers directly to PayPal's fully hosted checkout page. And the payment Payment buttons are here if you would like to obtain code from us to apply on your own website. You have the option to get code for our stacked buttons as you see in our preview here or our single button which you can toggle the preview here. Let's go back to the stacked buttons preview and for the purposes of this guide I'll leave this option as payment buttons. But if you aren't interested in this option just note that the options below are all identical for the payment link and QR code option with the exception of one section that I'll make sure to call out during this video guide so everyone can follow along all of these steps irrespective of which of these two options were selected. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's give the product that we're selling a name and an option optional description here. I just pasted this, but as you paste or type, you will notice the preview updates on the right side to give you a rough idea of how it will look. For the price section, you can select for the customer themselves to decide the price if you have bespoke prices for each customer or any other reason, or you can leave it on one set price and set your price here. That's what I'm going to do for this example. I'll put a price here and make sure your currency is accurate as well. Optionally, you can toggle on quantity if you'd like to set a maximum number that the customer can purchase of this product. Again, optionally, you can toggle this on under images and upload up to five images here for your product. That's what I'll do right now. I'm going to go ahead and just upload and find the images on my local computer, select them, and you can do multiple images up to five. I'm just going to do a few images here. I'll speed it up. In the next section, this is the only option specific to our payment buttons. So if you're watching this video only for the payment link or QR code, then hang tight for a quick moment and you can disregard this option and leave it toggled off. Now, if you've already watched our video that goes over the settings page and you want to use those default options, then no need to enable this. But if you haven't yet, or perhaps you have, but you still would like these buttons to veer from the default options for your own business reasons, then enable this button labels toggle. Here you have the settings for both the stacked buttons and the single button type. Let me briefly explain the difference and when you will want to 
use one versus the other. Apart from your personal preference, it's important to note that the stacked buttons uses JavaScript and the single button is basic HTML that is designed to be used in instances where you may be using an online editor that imposes limitations on the code that you're able to paste. Limitations such as not allowing you to use JavaScript or not allowing to edit the website documents' head, for example. Another difference between the two is the code that you will be given for the stacked buttons will display all of the product information and images that you provided, while the single button just gives you a button, as you can see up top here in the preview. This is what it will look like. On clicking this single button, your customers will be taken to a fully hosted checkout and show the same information for your product and images and all of that information that you provide. Once you've decided which type of button best works for your website, go ahead and modify the options here on what you want the button label to say. If you're using the single button, we'll go to the single button section, you can use the preset phrases here of buy now or pay now. And as you can see, that will update the button text up here, but you can also click on custom and it will allow you to type your own custom text on the single button. Let's click on show more options. Now the remaining options apply to everyone, the payment links and QR codes, as well as the button. So we could all follow along again. If you want the customers to have the option to leave you a quick note during checkout, you can toggle this one and you can also make it mandatory if you'd like. Simply add a label for this option. If your product has a SKU or any sort of product identifier that you want to associate with this button, you can toggle this on and add that here. You also have the option to add product variants and track product inventory. You have up to three different variants that you can add, but just keep in mind that only the options of the first variant of your product can have their inventory tracked. Let's demonstrate the variance by toggling it on and giving this product variant a name here. We give you the option to also vary the price per each variant option by checking this box here, as well as add individual pictures for each option, but you could only add the price per option and the images for the first variant. The second and the third variants only include names and option names. So let's take a moment to configure a few variant options here, along with their respective images and prices. Here I'll add a second variant and it comes with less details as I mentioned before, no pictures or anything, but you can add up to 10 options per variant. I'm not gonna add a third variant, but you're able to if needed. Let's toggle on the inventory option now and you'll see the individual options for the first variant will already be displayed here. We already added a product ID or SKU at the top, but you must add the item ID for the variant options here, as well as the quantity of each option. Optionally, you can decide at which quantity threshold amount you would like to get an email alert regarding this variant option. Check this box if you want to allow customers to purchase items even if they are out of stock. Otherwise, if the inventory tracks an item out of stock, customers will be unable to purchase it when they arrive at our hosted checkout. Lastly, for this tab, if we scroll up a bit for the price option, if you selected customer set price, if we scroll down, the last option will then be label for invoice ID. This is if you want a field where customers can type some sort of ID that you may have previously sent them. You can customize the label here and it will be optional for customers to type something in there unless you make it mandatory by clicking it here. I'll go back up and change this for my example to one set price. Now let's click on the checkout tab next. We do want to collect the shipping address, but if you don't need it, then you can toggle this off. Let's collect shipping address fees by toggling this on and using one of the options here. You can use shipping rules from settings that can be preset in your PayPal dashboard. You can view, manage, and configure these rules by clicking on this link here. Or you can set a fixed shipping price for this product. You can also tell customers this product has free shipping or shipping may not be applicable for this product if you didn't originally collect shipping address. Let me change this to what I would like here. Lastly, you can toggle on taxes. And similarly, you have these options to preset the tax settings yourself from within your PayPal dashboards as general tax settings, which you can customize clicking on this link here, or you can determine a specific tax percentage here, or perhaps taxes aren't applicable for this product. I'm gonna go ahead and change this here to what I would like. Lastly, we can click on the confirmation tab and you have the option to enter a custom return URL where customers will be redirected to after a successful checkout. 
If you create another different product button altogether, you have the option to use yet a different auto return URL for that other product. So you can enter a generalized URL here like so, or you can also be specific to this product. I'm gonna change it to what I would do here. Once you're satisfied with all the modifications, you can click on build it at the top right. Now this will take you to the last page where I will briefly go over how to use the button that we just built. Starting with the stacked buttons tab, on the right side you will have part one where you can click on copy code and paste it on your website's head section and only paste it once. So you may create many of these or other types of buttons and will always be taken to this page with a part one, but only paste part one once in your head. And once you've done that, we can scroll and click on copy code and paste this code in the body of your HTML code near the product that you want the button to appear. Essentially, this code represents the stacked buttons. If you're a developer or need React code, you can switch this option up here. Otherwise, leave it as is. If you're unable to find the head section on your website or don't have that option at the moment, you can use a single button. So let's click on the single button tab here and it will give you only one small block of code that you can click on copy code and paste it anywhere on your website where you want the button to appear. If you did not follow this video guide for buttons, but instead for a payment link, click on the payment link tab and you can copy this link here and send it to anybody via email or text or social media. Lastly, click on the QR code tab and you are able to download the QR code image by posting this on social media or emailing it or texting it or even printing it if you need to. The QR code is a way to redirect to the payment link. Once again, if you ever need to see the code to any of your previously created payment links and buttons, you can click on this link here that says back to saved links and buttons. And that will take you to the list of previously created links and buttons in case you need to edit them or view the code once more. And that's it. We have now successfully created payment links and buttons.